my folks, this is all the fruits and today I will be frolicking and fruit foraging through the beautiful warm spring city of Heidelberg in Germany. Not only being late March, this guy for example is wearing a sun umbrella. Let's see if we can find a couple nice rose hips here. There are some, but only on the cut-off branches. And they are small and tough. Maybe a couple nice Saskatoon flowers. Not really my favorite spring flower. I prefer the fruit. They are among the tastiest ornamentals around here. The elites don't want you to know that. But the ornamental cabbages in the parks are totally edible. I've already eaten a lot of tasty ornamental cabbage flowers and leaves. Just don't confuse them with toxic stuff like the spurges. Did I mention that it's warm and sunny? late afternoon in late March it's much warmer than on the Costa Tropical where I'm just coming from this is not so unusual it's actually quite a common occurrence in yeah March or April to have a really hot summer phase in Germany while the really warm and subtropical parts of Mediterranean of the Mediterranean are drowning in rain Let's see what fruits we can find. It hasn't been warm for too long. People told me for about, how was it, less than 10 days now. So the new fruits, most of them will not be ripe, but maybe we can find some old fruits. Mistletoe fruits, well, they are quite good for kissing underneath them. They are also quite good for trapping little birds, but not really good for eating. However, the tree those mistletoes are growing on it's a whole different story. This is a black walnut from North America. And black walnuts, unlike the Persian or so-called English walnut, can sometimes survive for months while already on the ground. So if I manage to collect enough walnuts which haven't broken open yet, Mm, around this time of the year, maybe 50% or 60% of them will still be edible. Let's see what we got here. Well, March is no fruit foraging time in Germany, but if it's not too dry like it is now, it's a very good time for foraging for spring greens. Here, the classic, the stinging nettle. Here, Aliaria petiolata, a mustard relative that tastes like garlic. I think it's called the garlic mustard or something like that. And here, the little Ranunculus vicaria, which used to be the first green and vitamin C rich in many areas of Europe, so it was instrumental in preventing scurvy in the poor peasants of the medieval times. But we have fruit foraging channel. Let's at least try to find something the flowering quince, you can eat the flowers, but maybe we'll get lucky and find some fruits. Not too unusual after mild winters. Well, not rotten fruits, of course. Here we are, some of the fruits on the ground. Oh. Uh, still yellow and shiny, a bit rotten here and there, a bit not by the reds here and there. Mm. But still totally edible and delicious. Another nut, which like the walnut is no real nut but a seed, is the almond, in this case the peach almond, a hybrid between peaches and almonds. And yeah, sometimes, if you are lucky, yeah, you can also have about 50-60% of 
edible non-rotten seeds inside of those. Peppered spurs is also considered a very valuable edible spring green. Pine seeds are edible and in the hot dry weather it's possible that those are just releasing their seeds. Oh yeah, we're gonna eat tonight. Well, when I said all pine seeds are edible, I meant it literally, yeah, they are edible, they are all non-toxic and tasty, unlike some other conifer seeds, but of course size matters. Mm. And those tiny seeds of the Scots pine, yeah, they totally taste like like um, domestic stone pine seeds, but they are less than 1% of their size. Some ornamental cherries. Ornamental is the operative word. Those will never develop fruit, so we can eat the tasty flowers. Hmm, slightly bitter but nice. Ah, pretty bitter actually. I've rarely eaten such bitter cherry flowers. Let's see if those here are less bitter. This is some different species or hybrid or variety. Oh, is it quite bitter? Some ornamental rose hips. Those are usually bad compared to the really tasty wild rose hips, but let's try them. Actually not that bad. Yeah, they are tough, but the taste is good, like a really tough apple. Uh, <laughs> now I got itching powder in my mouth. I have to eat very carefully around it, so yeah. Not bad for ornamental apples, yeah, for ornamental rose hips. Tastiest ornamental flowers are usually the pear flowers, but this usually applies just to Purus communis. Ornamental pear flowers often have a different taste. Mm. Edible, but not as good as the flowers of the edible pear. Definitely not as good. Silver berries growing, and in this very sheltered location, the shrub is covered with ripe fruit. That's a jackpot, folks. That's a jackpot in March. Hanging full of fruits, but most on this one are still very unripe. However, the bush next to it has a lot of ripe ones. Here you can see the difference. The bush on the right, almost no ripe fruit. The bush on the left, still a lot of green ones, but also a lot of ripe ones. Uh, those are pretty much the only new fruits you can find in March. All the other fruits and nuts you can forage in March, or at least all the other three fruits and nuts, they are from last year. But those, those have grown and ripened in winter and early spring. Mm. Nice and sour. The good thing is, don't just chew the fruit, chew the seed. It's also totally edible. The only disadvantage is the fibrous the fibrous outer shell around the seed but the seed itself is edible and tastes like peanuts a black nightshade very important climate indicator I was told that this winter has been very mild but the black nightshade doesn't totally confirm it, okay? The location is not sheltered for an inner city location, but the whole plant seems to be 
to have frozen. Well, still can eat the fruit. Nice and tasty. Let's see. Mm. Uh -huh. Just the base has survived, so a mild winter, but not a very mild one. In this location, there is also the yellow nightshade, but I cannot see it right now. More different ornamental cherries. Well, the more the better. The lavender is not frozen. And it's even flowering in March. Mm, wonderful. And the mellow with its big tasty leaves has also survived. And it's even putting out its nice edible flowers. This is, I would say, what was it? Malva vulgaris var mauritiana. Well, it's definitely the var mauritiana, but I forgot the species name. A couple years ago, they started planting fehoa, acaseloviana, in our parks. I've never seen fruit, but now at least I know that the tasty flowers are edible and actually some of the best flowers to eat. Our most beautiful spring tree here in Germany, Magnolia grandiflora. The fruits are toxic, but the big petals are totally edible. Mmm, tasty. Camellias, very close relatives of the tea plant. I wonder if you can make decent tea from them. Maybe even from the flowers, please tell me. An ornamental currant. Totally edible flowers. I'm ashamed I forgot the name. Mm. Yeah, tastes like current, just without the sourness. Some big birches. That's the time of the year to tap them for birch water. Less sweet than maple water or maple sap, but just as tasty. Is there anything we can liberate from the neighborhood's community garden? Well, let's see. A couple black thorn flowers. Yum. Mm. They pack a punch. Couple nice big plump berberis fruit. Hmm. Dry but still tasty. We could cook and eat the tasty leaf stalks of the artichokes, of course, but I think we're gonna leave them alone for now. But we are going to liberate a few of the leaves and flowers from those fava beans. Fava beans develop very early. I mean, they will, I think, be six more weeks or so before you can even plant the kidney beans. But the fava beans are already ready for the first harvest. Mmm. Tasty, sweet, aromatic leaves. Some of the best spring greens. Okay, the flowers are not special. Mm, but the leaves are good. But also still they are mangled. But let's leave it for now. What about banana leaves? It seems that you can chop them up and eat them in curries. What if you eat them raw? Hmm. Boring. Neither good, not bad. Edible, I would say. But there is better stuff around. The humble alfalfa. Mostly known as a fodder for horses and other animals, but also totally edible for humans. Mm, tasty. I did not check for parsley, but here we have sage, rosemary and thyme. And another fehoa, but what I'm after right now are the small ornamental apples. 
So you didn't make it completely unscattered through the winter. This one will reject, but those two are totally good to eat. Maple flowers are usually full of sweet nectar. Yeah, nice and sweet. Only very few hawthorn fruits surviving. Most of them are black and rotten. The two years before last year, the two winters before last winter, were quite mild, preceded by dry summers, that mummified the hawthorn fruit very well. It seems that the mild winter alone is not enough without a, without a hot, dry summer for mummification. So let's eat this one. Probably the best fruit that makes it into spring is the common rose hip. Oh. But it seems that, yeah, despite the mild winter, the summer was too wet for a lot of them to get mummified because they almost none left on the plant. In previous years we had hundreds around this time of spring. Also quite dry. Usually they are better when they are juicy and you can squirt out the inside. Mm -hmm. The dried ones taste like dried cranberries. Just stay away from the itching powder around the seeds.